So we've got a little bit of a strange phenomenon here in the Lake District National Park today. It's something I haven't seen here for, I don't know, a good four to five weeks, maybe even six weeks, properly at least. We've got light, we've got sunshine, we've got this huge orange ball in the sky that's actually bringing us a little bit of heat. And uh, yeah, probably shouldn't get ahead of myself because we are in the lakes and it could all change in 10 minutes time. But as you can tell from that sarcasm, I'm absolutely delighted that we've got a little bit of sunshine for today's adventure and it's what I kind of want the fundamental moral almost of this video to be about and that's how as landscape photographers we should go out and embrace the middle of the day. You know, don't limit our shooting times to the golden hour and sunrise and sunsets and that sort of thing, especially in winter and I like to talk about it a little bit in, in this video but I really do want to make the most of this light overall. Um, we're at a beautiful place called Ullswater which is a lake um, in the sort of eastern part of the lakes. Some of that I probably don't visit enough, it's absolutely beautiful. Heading in this direction, and uh, we're basically just gonna have a little wander down the eastern side of the lake shore. Um, head to a small little fella, I think, and uh, just see what the day brings, see if there's anything to photograph, not too much pressure. Mostly just wanna enjoy this sunshine, so come with me. <laughs> So this is glorious. I've only come about 10 or 15 minutes since I first spoke to you guys, but if you've been watching my channel over the past month or so, it's been horrendous. The conditions have been grim. You know, you know, heavy rain, high winds, and just all in all horrible conditions to be out with, photography aside. Um, so I'm really enjoying this now. It's glorious. I'm really, I'm really milking it and soaking it all up. Not even just the light, the sunshine, just not being out in heavy winds. It is amazing. So, really enjoying that so far. And you can see I'm set up for the first shot of the day. Now I've stumbled across this little monument here. That I've, I've been past the Alos, but I've just never really stopped to look at it. And it's dedicated to three artists who were essentially inspired by this landscape and this view back over through the Ullswater Valley, back up towards, looking back towards Helvellian and Keldus. And um, it's, it is absolutely beautiful. And it's inspired me enough so when I get the old camera out and set up for the first shot of the day. So um, you can see here I've got the 55 to 200 lens on and I think I'm zoomed in around about 100 mil just over. And I think, I really think I'm making the most of this mid afternoon light, bearing in mind what this video is about. And um, obviously shooting in portrait dimension. Compositionally, we've got a couple of little boats down here at the bottom, which is really nice. Then in the mid ground, we've got this smaller fell called Keldus, which is a kind of wooded fell. Um, absolutely beautiful. Then in the background, of course, we've got looking back up towards Helvellyn, we've got a few of the higher fells that are covered in snow. Absolutely beautiful. And a nice little sky up there as well. Oh, excuse me. Um, ironically, I'm shooting at 1 800th of a second at F9 at ISO 100. Bearing in mind, you know, my last video was all about that I probably use my tripod a little bit too much, but this is an instance where I can use it. You know, I'm not rushing to try and catch some beautiful light or anything i can just slow down and take my time and for me that's like i mentioned in that in that vlog that's one thing i really really like about using my tripod now one thing i will say here reason i'm waving these about is we're getting quite a lot of glare off all's water itself and i'd like to use my polarizer on the front of this lens however on my filter holder thing here my 77 millimeter thread is stuck onto my filter holder. So this lens here has got a 52 mil thread, um, which means I can't kind of put this on here 
to use my polarizer, which is a little bit unfortunate um, because it would be preferable. However, I don't think it's really that much of a big deal. Um, it's not a mind-blowing photograph anyway, but I don't know. Uh, we'll see how it turns out. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's pretty much it with this one, I think. Um, pleasant photograph to start the day. <sighs> Glorious conditions, absolutely beautiful, stunning, and I'll pop this one up for you guys to see now, and then I'm looking forward to cracking on. Hope you like it. Sleeting. It's sleeting. That did not last long. Look at this. You know what? I'm not even going to complain because this, this is what I love about the Lake District National Park. This is why I come here twice a week. This is why I host workshops here because it's so incredibly changeable. Up in that valley there, we've got sideways precipitation. It is mental. And this dope here has not brought his waterproofs because he trusted in the forecast. Who trusts in the weather forecast in the Lake District National Park? Oh. Right, I'm gonna crack on because if I'm gonna get wet, I might as well get wet, eh? So, oh god, what's this? It's like hailstones now or something. Madness, right? Um, I'm going to crack on a little bit, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about why why you should get out and shoot in the middle of the day. Um, this is I, I've never seen the weather change so much so quickly in my life. This is absolute madness, right? I'm going to crack on. Speak to you in a bit. <laughs> Oh, so uh, pfft, look at that transformation since I last spoke to you guys. The hail went from, uh, the sleet went to hail that went to just honestly a full blown snowstorm. I don't even know how to clear my lens here. This video is about to get incredibly unprofessional. I do apologize. Look at my tripod that I've left on the floor down there. The poor little thing, absolutely covered in snow. Um, oh my God. I cannot keep this lens clean. I'm so sorry guys, this is madness. But, wow, it's even starting to clear up a little bit now. Oh, this was so unexpected. I've managed to get a shot and I think it's quality. I am so happy. Um, right, so the first thing that I really like is I didn't use my tripod. So carrying on from last week's video, handheld, 16 to 35. Oh my goodness, the snow's calmed down a little bit now. Look, you can see over there, holes water in the background. Um, 16 to 35, you can see over the right shoulder there. We've just got this beautiful selection of trees, a real variety. We've got a few Scots pine trees dotted about. I think over here somewhere, yeah, there we've got an oak tree. And it was just this glorious scene. And what was awesome about it was because the snow's coming from kind of that direction back towards Oldswater, um, real proper like horizontal snow it meant that only one side of all these trees were getting covered in snow so it was like really sort of dark brown on the left hand side of the trees and on the right hand side the snow had covered them so it was this beautiful contrast oh absolutely gorgeous I have never seen the ground get covered in snow so quickly here oh my god that was amazing 
So I'll just quickly show you where I was. I'll try and get back into position so I can show you. Show, show, so I can show you. So I was about here and I was basically, it's honestly, it's such a cool winter scene. Like um, pretty much to this Scots pine tree here, which is on the right hand side of the frame, all the way to him, that oak tree, which is on the left hand side of the frame. And uh, oh my God, can you even see me? What's going on? absolutely unreal so yeah 1635 f13 iso 320 not afraid to bump the iso up and because of the the snow was moving so fastly i wanted to capture it as a flurry in the photograph so the image isn't going to be incredibly sharp because we've captured some of that snow in the frame but it captures the emotion absolutely perfectly and to get that 1 30th of a second which is very slow to shoot handheld but with vr on um, on this lens Keeping the old hands as steady as possible when I'm when I was shooting, um, it, that's going to be just about all right. And on the back of the camera, at least, they're looking brilliant. So, what? That's mad. We've got blue skies now, madness. So we've got a playground to play with here, right? Apologies again for the unprofessional filming there, guys. I hope this shot's worth it. Oh my god, that was fun. Come out and shoot in the middle of the day. Oh. Upon arriving home and bringing the images up in Lightroom, I quickly realised that I'd captured the emotion of the moment perfectly. This is my favourite photograph of 2020 so far. So apology guys, that was pretty mad. I, uh, there was nothing I could do with regards to filming that. It was just carnage. But I hope that you at least got that vibe from that um, little photography session we had there. It was absolutely incredible. I was not expecting any of this at all. I wanted to come out and make a little video about how pleasant it is to come out and shoot in the day. Weather changed like that madness absolutely amazing no like this is what i love landscape photography so much because oh because of these things these these events when it all just oh absolutely unbelievable that was crazy incredibly picturesque um it's like the gods have come and just dumped me a load of beautiful snow and now the light's out again so i'm trying to make the most of that here and you guys have seen that last photograph there Oh, I really, really, really hope that it come out all right. I've got like visions of it being uh, blurry or there was water drops on the lens. If there is, there's just nothing I could do about it. Um, but we'll wait and see. I'm not going to stress about that just yet. Um, so anyway, um, absolutely amazing. This is why you should come out and shoot in the middle of the day. Because you never know what's going to happen. If I decided not to come out this morning. Oh my God, I'd have missed out on this. Obviously I wouldn't have known what I'd have missed out on. But, oh wow, I think I've just got a cracking image. Right, anyway, I'm getting over excited. Ah, me knee. I was running around like a lunatic then and I think I've hurt my knee. Right, uh, so this shot is basically shooting in exactly the same direction, but basically trying to make the most of the same sorts of elements. So we've got that beautiful contrast on these Scots pine trees where we've got the snow on the right hand side and those sort of dark trunks, uh, the snow on the right hand side of the trunk and then the darkness of the trunk on the left hand side. And you can see there now the light's incredibly changeable. So it's taken a few photographs. Um, I will say at this stage, I'm shooting pretty much directly into the sun, a little bit off to the right. So I am bracketing. Um, generally though, my settings, F9, ISO 100, and then my middle exposure is 1 60th of a second and I'm pretty much doing like three shots either side exposure wise just to make sure that when I get home 
I, I know I can definitely pull something out of the bag, you know, with regards to this shot. Um, but the composition's pretty nice. Um, as you can see in portrait dimension here, 16 to 35 lens still on, but I'm zoomed in at 28 mil. So I'm just trying to get a little bit closer to the landscape and make it a little bit more intimate. You know, my last one caught a lot of what we're looking at here. It was pretty much capturing like a winter wonderland scene, which is still quality, but I wanted this one to be a little bit different. So we're honing in on a few more of these Scots pine trees and we're just basically, we've been in portrait dimension, we're trying to capture them sort of bottom to top. And we've got a few of these beautiful rocks and crags scattered about the bottom of the frame as well. So that's that's a really nice foreground element. And of course we're wasted amongst all these sort of dead ferns here. Um, it's just covered in snow. So again, another beautiful foreground element. This is gonna be different to the last image um, because um, all the low cloud has, has disappeared. Obviously that snowstorm has gone. So we are capturing a, quite a few of the fells in the background as well. And they've obviously all been hit with snow. Wow. Absolutely unbelievable. Oh my goodness, right. So hopefully this one comes out. I'll pop it up for you guys to see. Of course, hope you like it. And then I wanna have a little bit of a chat, just briefly, <laughs> as the plan was, um, about why you should come out in the middle of the day with your camera. And a little bit about my backstory when I first started as a landscape photographer. Um, I hope you like this shot. <laughs> So when I was first getting into landscape photography, back in the New Zealand days, I, um, I, I basically, well I'm self-taught, so I learned a lot from reading, a hell of a lot from reading, a lot from YouTube, and mostly from just going out, you know, by myself and making mistakes. That's how I learned the sort of basics of, you know, learning how to use your camera, learning the basics of composition and all that sort of stuff. Now when I first started out, especially the first year or two, I never really went out during the day, but the only reason I did that is because of what I'd read and what people said on YouTube about how incredible, you know, the golden hour is and, and the sunrise and sunset, which it is, it's true. And don't get me wrong, nobody ever said like on YouTube, never go out during the middle of the day, but I'd allowed myself to get conditioned to never going out, never going out in the middle of the day because I had this crazy idea that you can only get nice photographs, sunrise, sunset, and golden hours, which is ridiculous. And one of the main reasons why I wanted to make this video, or at least, you know, talk a little bit about this today on my channel, is because I don't want people, especially beginners, to think that to get good photographs, you have to only be out at golden hours, sunrise, and sunset, because it's just not true. And in fact, what's prompted me to make this video and chat about this topic, is the fact that I've been looking back a lot at some of my older images just to get ready for my exhibition, just basically figuring out, I don't know, I'm gonna have 20 or 25 images for my exhibition. Obviously, they need to be my top 20, 25 images. And it really sort of dawned on me, well, most of my favorite photographs are taken during the day. Like, don't get me wrong, there's some class sunrises and sunsets out there in, in my portfolio, but. Most of my favorites are taken in the middle of the day. The Three Sisters in Glencoe was just taken in the middle of the day. We had some beautiful moody weather. Scott's Pine Island, middle of the day. It was raining in the foreground, but we had some beautiful light in the background. And, you know, there's a shot that I can think of when I was back in New Zealand, which was very rare. I remember getting the photograph and thinking, oh, that's a nice photograph for being in the middle of the day. Um, as if it's some sort of crazy time to be out with your camera. But yeah. Basically, get out with your camera in the middle of the day, especially in winter time when the sun is low in the sky. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't want to paint a picture on this channel that there is anything wrong with it. Right, with that being said, I'm going to end the video there because I'm going for a curry and I need to get back. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Another crazy adventure all over the place but I've hoped you've enjoyed it. It's just the reality of landscape photography. And remember, get out and shoot during the middle of the day. Thank you so much for your support recently. It's been amazing. Things are going really well with this channel and that's all down to you guys showing me love and showing me support. 
much appreciated. Um, like the video, comment below, please do. Love hearing from you guys and please subscribe if you're new. There's two videos a week and plenty more to come. Cheers, see you on the next one. Out.